Welcome to this edition of Becoming Fearless. I have um, Lynn Madelon. Am I saying it right? You said it's it Lynn. perfectly. <laughs> it's funny. I've known her for what a few. I years was just now. thinking the same about you. I was like, is it Begin? Is it Begin? Like, how do I not know how to pronounce his last name? Yeah, we've known each other for a while, and and my last name is Bayesian, actually, like wow. a- Asian with a B. So two out of two was no yeah, go. All right, we, we're already p- failing as friends. <laughs> um, yeah, nobody knows how to say my last name. People that know me for years will still say Beijing, Beijing, all kinds of weird stuff. And um, Asian with a B. Yeah, that's that's why that's why my family says it. But there are Beijians out there, Beijon, Beijon, and that's they say it the, more the French way. And I still don't know if I'm saying that right either. But it sounds nicer, doesn't it? It does. It sounds fancy. I should use that. But I feel like it feels weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used that to means you got to use it more. So let's go into your history with Fearless and, and your personal history too around coaching. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. I remember when we met, you said, you know, people are always in your life for a reason and you never know where that journey is going to lead to. And here we are. I think it's been four or five years, maybe. It has, it's been a while. Yeah. I've always been fascinated with fascinated with not just dating, but how people communicate. And I believe that that came from personal struggle. I was not understanding why people were moving in and out of my life. And I was a little obsessed about getting into my head and finding out what I was doing wrong. And that was mistake number one, (laughs) which is how I got into the industry. I went through a, a pretty bad breakup and I found myself in a seminar that spoke to how men work and it, it instilled a little fire in me. And whose program was that? This was uh, Matthew Hussey's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Matthew yeah, Hussey. It, uh, it wasn't done by him. It was actually done by his dad. Was two or 300 women, and they were so inspired. They felt they were doing something similar where they had a container of three to four women. They would go out together, and they'd kind of be wing women for each other. Right. But the relationships they built from that, and it went less about finding a guy, getting a guy, keeping a guy into being your own woman, uh, being more in touch with yourself and your needs. And it didn't go as deep as fearless, but that's what got my my path going. And that's the same basic principle that we do. Right. And, you know, the whole idea of fearless is as you become solid as a man, you become powerful as a man and you start to own your masculinity and your confidence and the women are just going to show up. And, yes. and we do teach some dating principles too, but that's secondary to loving yourself, liking yourself, feeling powerful, feeling sexy, and I see the same thing on a woman. When a woman radiates her femininity and knows basically she's the shit, not because she's better than anybody else, just because she's, she, she likes herself, mm-hmm. then uh, she's very attractive. Well, that's why you, you know, there can be a beautiful woman, gorgeous, head to toe, but if she doesn't feel it, she's not recognized. There can be an average looking woman that just embodies herself and just is confident. And that lady is so much more attractive and sexier than the one that's uh, more of a conventional, good-looking girl. Yeah, you'll see it in the way they walk, talk, carry themselves. Um, um, Marilyn Monroe was famous for this, right? Mm -hmm. Norma Jean, she she could walk down the street, and there was a story I heard just recently how she could turn it on and turn it off. Mm. Like she would walk a certain way and make herself shrink. Nobody would notice her. Nobody even realized it was Marilyn Monroe. And then... She got, and then she would say to somebody, uh, watch this. And she'd turn on Marilyn Monroe and oh, wow. pop, you know, change her posture, you know, start walking in a way, a new way, drop low in her hips. So she's in her sexual energy. And I actually, now that I'm thinking about this, I, I dated a girl that used to do this too. And then everybody's heads would start turning and everybody'd be like, that's Marilyn Monroe. And no change. She, she didn't put on makeup. She didn't change her clothes. It was just a shift. Um, with her, I don't know. Cause this is just a story I heard. And I, I believe it because I've heard this story many times and I, I can see it in Marilyn because when you look at her and you take and you strip her down, she, she's not technically the most stunning woman. It's her energy. It's the way she exudes herself. And so my ex-girlfriend was that way too. She could, she could make herself look, average and she could also go out and drop into her hips and roll and walk down the street and heads would snap and and it it, it blew my mind these i was almost like two polarizing personalities she could bring out and uh, when she wanted to yeah and it's powerful and i i think that this is also true i see this in men too we can disappear you know our sub communication is everything i'll give you an example why aren't the most sexy male models the ones you look at in magazines with their their the women say wow he's sexy why aren't they a-list celebrities and leading men actors uh, winning oscars because they don't have that something 
And why do the average leading male and female actors and actresses not look like models? Why do they, you know, it, technically they're, they're attractive, right? but they're not like that supermodel quality. They're like, if you look at an Al Pacino or you look at a, you know, a Daniel Craig's who's got his ears sticking out this way. If you look at him technically, he's not, he's got a good build, but you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's all about the energy that you put in. They're beautiful, beautiful, big women. Big oh, I've women. seen this. Yeah. yeah. I've seen women go out and get guy after guy after yeah. guy. And I've seen beautiful women have trouble meeting guys. Yep. And so this brings up to another topic. Sometimes girls, because women on average can meet guys pretty easier than guys can meet girls because guys are expected to approach. But, but several of the complaints I've had from women is, A, I, I don't meet guys, which which I remember talking to a girl about years ago, and I don't find I find that there's several reasons for that. And the other one is that I don't meet the type of guys I like. Um, like one girl was saying to me, a really, I'll, I'll give you the two examples. The first girl was saying to me, um, I, I can't meet a guy. Um, and I looked at her and I said, that's weird. Now, she wasn't gorgeous, but she wasn't ugly. She was an average girl. And I said, and so she goes, and I go out to bars all the time, and no guys come up to me. And I said, well, and I looked at her, and I kind of took her energy in, and I thought, let me ask you some quick questions. And then I want you to comment on this. I said, do you, do you sit in a big pack of girls? She said, yeah. And I said, do you ever look at a guy in the eyes and then kind of look down, look back, smile, or anything like that? She goes, no. So I said, you got two major strikes there. If you're in a big pack of girls hiding, that's very intimidating for guys. You're not smiling at them. You're not looking at them. You're making yourself a wallflower within that big pack. That's another problem. So I said, I just told her, sit with one girl, and when you see a guy you like, smile and look down and look back. And and I came in the bar that night, this was because I knew her personally, and boy, she was dancing up a storm. She was having a great time. She was laughing, and um, she actually ended up meeting the guy she had a child with that night. And um, and it was it was a powerful experience for her. And she realized all this time she had been the one keeping guys away through her actions. And then the other one, I'll tell you about the other one. I want you to give me your feedback. Yeah. The other one um, was a woman, a cute little blonde. He said, I go out to bars all the time and guys never approach me. Guys don't talk to me. And looking at her, I knew her energy and I knew the way she was. And I, I assume she wasn't in a big pack of girls. And I just said, what you mean is guys you like don't approach you. Guys approach you all night, right? And she goes, well, yeah, 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 yeah. But they, they don't count. And so can you comment on these two? What, yeah, absolutely. I, I, one, it's just women don't realize how scary it is for a lot of men to approach women, especially if it's not with drinking or at a bar or a situation like that. So having that energy of being approachable, and that could be as simple as body language, as uh, putting yourself in opportunities or situations where they can more easily come up to you. The more you're surrounded by women, the more the guy needs to be seen and kind of either rejected or accepted in front of a crowd, essentially. So you, no one would want to do that. Make yourself more approachable, have, like you said, one or two women, and also open body language. If you're having a conversation with your, your girlfriend and you're squared off like this, it's very hard for a guy to come in there and introduce himself. So open yourself up to the room. Uh, the other thing you said that she was with a pack of women, oh, that she wasn't looking around. You need to kind of Feel the situation, be in the moment, look around, see who's attracting you. Who is it? Whoever that is, make sure you're giving those same signals back. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just a subtle eye glance and then return to your conversation and find the person again. This time another eye glance, but hold it a little bit lo longer. Go back and then a little flirtatious moves. So it could be the twirling of the hair, the showing of the neck and just kind of smiling make that more available to him. And do you find, and this was the, the, the next topic I was going to cover actually, but you, you led into it, which is perfect. All these little flirtatious moves, these little signals that women send off of flirtation, how good, how well do women know them on average? How, when you run into these women, do they, have they, are they so in touch with their masculinity today? They've lost them. I mean, I, what's going on? I was just going to say, I think that it's a dying art. I think that it's a, almost a lost art. We're so nervous about getting in touch with that side of us that we we've become very almost data driven like why isn't he approaching me i'm opening up myself but you're not really feeling your body you're not really the way you said that i'm opening up myself and it sounds like a business deal it, it, that's yeah. what yeah that's what i'm saying it's more data analytical transactional but there's no polarity there's no, no sexiness pull. no yeah. 
Now, yeah, do you see a difference? Like we're in, we're in Romania right now, Bucharest, Romania, and do you see a difference in the Eastern European women than the average American women? Absolutely. The the women here are a lot more feminine. Yeah, they 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 play with that subtle stuff a lot more. They do, but they're very powerful too. Yeah. Oh, the, the feminine is, in my opinion, uh, men and ladies, ladies and men, uh, one of the most powerful energies. It, it's so powerful, and so many women and so many men today, at least in Western society, not over here, uh, they don't seem to respect it like they should. Not even the men. The men love it and they're craving it. But a lot of women think that it's almost like they think it's weak or something. Yeah. And that, that's the problem. so not. No, it's not. It's like you said, you, there's so much power in there. Yeah. And and we need to be more in tune with that. I mean, there's, if you just think about the, the craze of a lot of American guys are looking for Eastern European woman. Yeah. And Mark, uh, Mark Edward Davis, who you just met, yeah. I just did an interview with, he was talking about the success of marriage. He said, if you put it, uh, a Western man with a Western woman, the, the divorce rates around 50%, maybe even a little bit more. You put uh, a Eastern European man with an Eastern European woman, the divorce rates pretty high or they don't really, they don't really succeed either. But you put a Western man with a we- Eastern European woman, they tend to uh, have a really high rate of staying together. And, it, and he's been doing this for over 10 years. Through what, 300, over 300 marriages, 2% divorce rate? That's wow. pretty insane. In, yeah. And so um, now, of course, they both wanted to be married, the man and the woman. He checked all this out. They weren't just, you know, but uh, that's pretty fascinating. Yeah. And so, and the one thing I see is that the American men will, are craving to find a, a feminine woman that wants him to be the masculine, wants him to be her hero. Yeah, and I, I think that men too are now because we've lost that polarity. They're in, they're scared of also being masculine. Yeah, there's a lot of the whole toxic mas- masculinity movement yes. causes men to be afraid of masculine. Right, and what, so we're kind of lost. We don't yeah. know what role we're filling. Yeah, and then women take up the masculine role, and then you get and then what happens is I see a lot of women get used to taking up the masculine role, and then they don't let the they don't. It's almost like they don't give the guy a chance. Right. And so reestablishing that dance consciously, mm-hmm. if you look at David Data's work, it's, it's beautiful work, but reestablishing that dance of the, the masculine and the feminine, not that the woman can't be masculine at work and the man can't be feminine at his work, maybe he's an artist, but when they come together in polarity, just to keep that, that when they come together in relationship to keep that polarity alive, knowing I'm gonna step into my feminine with you right now, I'm gonna step into my masculine and we're gonna do it as an art, not as something we have to do, something by choice. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to have this division of the company really create. Yeah, I say that all the time. I'm very grounded. I'm very results driven. I love business. I love working. I'm in my masculine a lot, 80% of the day. It is very difficult for me to get into a relationship because I need a man to ground me. And since I already have such strong grounding, it's difficult to find that polarity. But when I do, it feels so wonderful because I'm able to go home, let loose, let go of that masculine energy and step into my feminine. When you come into a relationship, that's not where you want to be. No. And that's that's the beautiful thing. It kind of reminds me of the CEO that's in his masculine all day and he goes to a dominatrix at the end of the day just to be dominated so he can surrender. Finally know? surrender. Yeah, because she'll take yeah. all the power away. Mm-hmm. And there's that moment of, ah, oh, I don't have to do it all anymore. Yes. And that's, uh, that's fascinating. That's, that's what I want. Yeah. I think that's what we, what we all want yeah. as women. Yeah, I would, say, I would say that there probably are a small percentage of men and women that are reversed, right? Mm. You know, there's a small percentage of women that truly want to be the masculine and, and a small percentage of men that truly want to be the feminine. And that's awesome. Find each other. You know, but yeah, they're out there. Yeah, but the, but this is a whole different uh, what we're talking about. Well, you could just reverse everything we're saying. You know, mm-hmm. and it's perfect. Yeah, you need polarity. Either either even if the woman has it, she has the masculine, and the man has to have the feminine. Yeah. But there has to have polarity. There, yeah, definitely. Because if you don't have polarity, what do you have? You have two best friends, and, yeah. the, and that's no a, tension. Yeah, and if you want an asexual relationship, that's fine too. Right. Because why, you know, with no tension, nobody wants sex. You lose interest. Maybe maybe she's got a hot body and you're like, oh, I want her body at first. But then after a few times having sex with no polarity, you lose interest and vice versa. Same with the guy. So talk about from your personal journey of a woman that, that didn't get it. Like it, it was because she was so used to being trained into the, 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 the masculine energy 
Um, you go get it, make it happen. I'm a woman, hear me roar, that kind of stuff. Um, to a woman, what's that journey like going from that to a woman who's starting to play more and more with being feminine in a relationship, being feminine with men? It feels, um, for lack of a better word, it, it just feels right. It feels natural. It feels like when I'm able to be in my feminine, it feels like I can explore and I can be in flow. I can, I know that he will always have my back. I know that I don't need to worry, um, that I can just be playful and tease and, and not have to, to direct or to lead knowing that, that he's got my back for that. Yeah. And so, so when a lot of women out there, they're thinking about, well, I don't know that I want to, I don't trust a man to take charge or lead or what, what, what would happen or where, where is it going to go? You know, things are going to go wrong. Things are, mm-hmm. is it truly that you're surrendering all power? I mean, what's going on there? No, you're not surrendering power. You are allowing yourself to be in your feminine. You are, um, and that's not going to happen unless your, your partner is in his masculine, of course, yeah. but it's, n- it's not a, power thing it's a um it's a dance i look at a woman when she does that and i ask myself there's this misnomer out there this idea that that if i do that then i just have to do whatever he says i'm just you know i'm like he's in charge and i have to do whatever he says and that's not what's really going on is it no it's not what's really going on it's really going on is that you you both know that you're going the same direction but the woman is not the one that's leading and a woman can always redirect the guy where she wants to go but we do it subtly we do it with emotion we do it with um communicating in a style that makes him feel like he's leading even though truly the woman really is directing or guiding which you can do for a moment of time but you do want to have him lead if you if that's the kind of relationship you're in well i think when both partners understand their roles and agree to play it. Uh, like I do this in business a lot, right? Like who's who's going to handle the masculine and feminine in the business? Mm-hmm. doesn't matter if you got two male partners, two female partners. Um, you got to know these roles. And that's what I look at. So I'm going to, for the guys out there listening to this, I'm going to translate it kind of into guy speak. The world is the tension world and the woman's world is the emotion world. So the physical tension, emotional tension. The tension, like let's say if we take an old village, the guys are hunting, protecting. We go to the most primitive society, we can see it. Hunting, protecting, providing, and they're creating this nice, safe space. And here's the wild world, and here's the safe space within it. And they're going to manage the walls of that space mm-hmm. and make sure it has constant influx of supplies. You feel contained. Right, the container. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they're going to protect it. The women go inside and fill up the inside of that space with love, laughter, hum- and then that influences what the men do on the outside to go battle the world. And then they come back and bring in more because they feel like they feel every time they give more to the world, the world gives more back to them and they create a cycle. And I think that's what women don't see is the power that they have inside that space to influence what happens outside that space and vice versa. What does that look like in a modern relationship? Mm. And I'm exploring this right now because it's the first time I'm really thinking I'm thinking of it a little differently than I have in the past. What does that look like in a modern household? What does that look like? Because some people would say, oh, well, I just come home, cook the dinner, and do the dishes. No. That's not what we're saying at all, you know? No, I think that it's more primitive than that. It is the the woman doing the nurturing, the emotional support, the also the attraction and the teasing and um, just being in her own beauty. Yeah, she's creating radiance, a reflection of light, uh, expression of light, because that's what femininity is. It's this flow to inspire. Exactly. To inspire, yeah. heal, and nurture. Right. Whereas a manipulative woman might use it to get money, mm. to get or, things. Or to get something that she wants. Yeah. And it's not genuine or yeah. intentional. Yeah. And then a man, and a primitive man, might be using his physical tension to dominate, and, or a modern man and this is a David Data concept too, is comes back to he's using his physical tension to not lead what he wants, not what she wants, but reading into her so deeply, he's gonna he can feel what she feels almost before she does because he also has some feminine development too now. And he's gonna lead the relationship in the direction of what grows them both. Yeah. And that 
is why women love surrendering to a guy like that because he's got both their best interest in order and she has his back. And the more she has his back, the more he wants to take care of her and, the more, and he wants to uh, do amazing things for her and her world. And even down to she's going to go out and build her own career and he's going to believe in her in that. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's so sexy because a lot of guys get intimidated by that. Yeah. And that's, that's unfortunate because let's say she's building a, a, a business. The more you create a container for her to feel safe and come back to and surrender to that container so she can recharge for the next day to go out and get back in her masculine, be a hundred percent feminine for you that night, flow, dance, nurture, then go out the door and, and turn on her masculine to go battle the world. Then come back to her. You could be doing the opposite. You could be out being an amazing painter that makes a fortune around you. You come back and you step into your mask and that recharges you because you have a male body. Mm -hmm. That's the energetic dynamics I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. And so so you've seen a lot of the guys change over the years that we've worked with. No, a night lot. and day. Yeah. Night, like, amazing transformations. Okay, let's talk about why Fearless gets such big changes. What do you see in the, in the Fearless program that causes such a big change? So I'm not a big believer in that there's such a thing as someone needs to fix themselves or someone has an issue with dating. Uh, I think that's just on the surface. I think there's a lot of knots to untie underneath. And as a result, you'll be much more successful in your dating life or, or wherever you are that you're struggling. And that's how fearless is different. They don't approach dating as in just, we're going to teach you tools and you'll be a better dater. Yeah. They go way, way deep. They go really, really sit and look and release on what has been happening, what have you been doing that has caused you to be where you are right now. So when you make these changes, and every single guy that I've seen with Fearless has made those changes, your entire life is different, not yeah. just your dating life. The way, the way you see yourself is different. So for women, we need this just as badly. I know from personal experience and, and from hearing my girlfriends, we're so worried about not just how to get the guy, but how to keep the guy. And again, those aren't the core issues. That's just a result because there is something that we're not addressing inside and fearless gets deep down and figures that out. Our programs are very experiential and hearing you say that is really interesting because I'm watching the way you feel emotionally and the, and the reflection back. It, it hits me kind of hard because because the whole point is, is nothing changes unless we, we, we get into the nervous system. I can, I can feed you all the data in the world and you can take a million notes, but, uh, you know, t notebook after notebook. That doesn't mean you'll change. It's I, called shelf development. Have you heard <laughs> that? No, I you haven't. You start writing, writing, writing. You have a, a notebook and you just put it on the shelf and it stays on the shelf. Uh -huh. So instead of self-development, yeah, shelf development. And that's, that's awesome because that's what I had originally. I had a ton of books I'd read and I, they were all on the shelf. And yep. I knew all this data and I could tell people, do, 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 change this, fix this. But I could, my life was no different. And that's when I started to discover that you needed experiential work, deep experiential work. And I started to do this deep experiential work w with my first teacher, which was I was really lucky because the work I did with him was so subtle sometimes it's just these little things we would experiment with the littlest bit of tension or feeling or emotion and flow and mm -hmm. stuff i'd never seen anywhere else and we do it a lot in the workshop now and um what was fascinating to me was then i started to go out and do other experiential work and it was always bold and over the top it's like it's like we haven't built the foundation yet to do the big bold stuff and so what we work a lot with is is the littlest this is really hard to describe on on camera i gotta be honest i'm trying to think of a way to convey it but we work we work with the littlest bit of calibration of your ability to feel and communicate through emotion and tension and feeling. So when I look at you in the eyes, can I go deeper just a little bit at a time, feel you a little bit more? Can I open? Can I back up? Can I take you in more and feel that? You know, and exploring this stuff in, over and over and over again until this stuff starts to be move from subtle, because you'll say, every guy says in the beginning, this is really subtle too obvious and then pretty soon it's like oh my god this is not subtle this mm -hmm. is huge and here's the interesting part women get it so fast don't they they do yeah much faster than guys on average yeah because guys are built for this we're gonna go and protect the world they're not built to feel these subtle things sometimes which then changes how you protect the world mm -hmm. but women you women out there what you do is you you go in and you love this stuff and i see you come in you come into our workshops to help out and it's like your eyes get big and you're like, this is fascinating. Yes. This is interesting. Yes. 
And it brings out a bunch of our issues and our insecurities and, yeah. and things come into light where we weren't even aware of them before. And we're like, yeah. oh, that's why I do this. That's why I'm hung up on this thing. This is a tough question to ask. I've seen it in the models. Can we call them models? Just women that women that work with, with the men. They're not necessarily professional models or anything. And I remember one girl in particular, and I remember a lot of girls, but this one girl said it right. She said, she came in and she goes, when I first started working with you, I had so much resentment and anger towards men. Mm. She goes, I saw them all as unfeeling, cold. And she goes, and then I started working with you and I saw how much emotion they really had, mm -hmm. how much they were really feeling, how much they were bearing down deep inside. And it changed the whole way I looked at men. Mm -hmm. And now she's married with a baby. Her life is great. And she worked for me for, you've never met her, but she worked for me for about four years or something like that. And that's what I want for women. Yeah. What experiences have you changed, experienced working with Fearless as, as one of the models? So I used to be very much in my head and I wasn't as aware of, of feeling someone's energy or truly connecting. For me, connecting was just something that you do in a relationship or like a, a, you try to do on a date. But working with Fearless, I noticed that you're connecting with not just everyone, but with everything. Yeah. You're, you are being more in your body. You're being more present. You are just feeling more and letting that feeling direct you in life. Uh, it's so it's almost like a like a ton of bricks just falling off your shoulders where you know we have to have everything right and and we have these goals and everything needs to be a certain way and we get very disappointed if, if a doesn't happen and by just l surrendering and being in tune with with everything with everyone trying to feel their energy and when you're able to do that and this is what fearless does for guys it's just a, a different vibration that's just pretty right on and and here's the interesting thing i remember when you started with us you you your sub communication has changed drastically the yeah. way you talk to me even has changed drastically yeah. you had a you had a lot more nervous ticks back then if you don't mind my sharing please no yeah absolutely there yeah. was a little nervous ticks the way you communicated the way your head would pop and, and little mm -hmm. things are pulling out of the tension when you would talk to me and now you're like in it with me yeah. and you're holding it I and remember. you're dancing yeah, yeah. i was and, so in my head yeah, and that's where I was. I mean, my my old teacher when I first started all this work said, "You're you're so in your head. You're not in your head. You're above your head." That's what he would say to me. Yeah. He said, "You're trying to get out of your body." And I look back at the old videos of me. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> one of these. Sometimes they're hard to watch. Yeah, so one of these I'll break them out and show <clears> them to you. We are trying to connect with people. We are trying to figure it out, and that's not connecting. And we're so worried about how we come across. We're so worried about what we're saying or what the other person is thinking about us. And that's exactly where we're going wrong. We don't. And you, this is another topic, and, and, and I see it with the guys a lot, and I really want to bring this home to the women because I experienced this in a relationship once, and it drove me nuts. Um, I remember it. When their energy is going outward and giving, you ladies connect right up, and there's a sense. You can see it when we put it on camera. There's a sense that I'm enjoying you. I'm appreciating you. There's something about you that's interesting. When their energy is going inward, and I'm starting to do it and worrying about what you think of them and getting nervous and, and this feeling of, does she like me? Mm -hmm. That also conveys. And he can be the most handsome guy in the world. It's just weird. Yeah, It doesn't work. Um, and when women do the same thing, I had a girl that we, I used to love holding my hand. She would give so much sweet energy. And we'd go and run, it just touched me and run through my body. And then I felt, right as years ago, right as we were breaking up, her energy would start to pull back. And it was actually go, and it was like she was trying to take from me. Mm. I could feel the difference in the hand, and it would drive me nuts. And I didn't want to hold her hand anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, and it wasn't that I didn't want to hold her hand. I recognized that. I just didn't want her to do that energy to me. You felt that. Yeah, and I'm very sensitive to stuff now after years of doing it. And so this is what I really want to teach because as soon as I show the ladies, as soon as we show the ladies, because we're gonna be doing it together, they get it so fast sometimes. They, they feel it. Like we put them in front of a guy, some new girl, and say, watch this. And she's like, yeah, I see it. You know, she didn't know exactly what it was, but she got it so fast sometimes. Mm -hmm. And and this can be life-changing for them. Oh, it will be. Yeah. I'm it's, confident. So about what that. are the unique, because guys have their unique challenges, one of them being a little more stubborn, a little more bigger, thicker walls. They got to be ready to deal with that physical tension so they don't let emotions shift easily. What do you think are going to be the challenges that the women are going to run into that are uniquely female, feminine? I think recognizing how to step into our feminine energy and like we said in the in the beginning, not seeing that as giving away our power. 
That's a big one. Yeah. That's a huge one. I th- also think that there's a, a, th- a big question mark or stigma with being and feeling sexy yeah. and how to deal with that. I also think that we have a lot of attachment to outcome with men, the way that they respond to it. We start internalizing that. Sometimes it causes us to clutch on and hold very, very tightly. And then we get surprised when they disappear or they stop communicating. Yeah, the, the, the codependent neediness, please don't leave me. Because I've heard the term that, you know, women are the gatekeepers of sex and men are the gatekeepers of relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that clutching could be huge. And what, the one you said before that was the sexy, which is also interesting to me. Because sometimes I see women obsessing over their bodies way more to the point that it's like, it's way more than I would even like. Like I'm looking at you and I, you look great. And they're still obsessing, oh, yeah. still obsessing. Oh, we're much harder on ourselves than guys are. Yeah. And the guy's thinking on her since she looks amazing. But then every day she comes in and says she doesn't pretty soon. He's like, well, maybe she's right. Every day you tell me your ass is fat pretty soon. I'm like, okay, your ass is fat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But if you feel sexy, you feel sexy. Yeah. And I don't know why I'm thinking of this this woman you just with what we just talked about. If you guys look her up on YouTube, her name's Hattie, and she's eighty some years old, lives in New York somewhere. And there's a little age gap documentaries on her. She does, she loves her age gap relationships, and she's she loves guys in their twenties, in their twenties, and she's in her eighties. And she goes on Tinder and picks up guys in their twenties all the time, and she's super excited and happy and full of life. And, you, and these every one of these documentaries, she's like, "I can't wait to meet this guy." And she's talking about the next guy she's going to meet. And somebody asked her, "Why do you like dating all these young guys?" And she's super feminine and flowy and loves to dress up and does all her exercises for sex and does all. <laughs> she's, she's hilarious, and she goes, um, "Because the older men, they've done it." And the younger men, they haven't done it yet. So they just, they have this sense of, I'm going to go out and conquer the mm. world. And I want to be with a guy like that, that wants to go out and conquer the world yes. and has that drive inside of him still. And so she works really hard, even in her 80s, at staying feminine, staying in flow, doing her exercises, being an inspiration, and wanting to inspire these young men to be their best. And then going out and finding them. And she gets them. And so this talks to the, the, the part of women that think, when men only want younger women. No, that, that's not at all what they're looking for. They're looking for that energy. Like yeah. you said with, you said her name is Hattie? Yeah. Hattie, same thing. Yeah, she's got it. Mm-hmm. She's got it in spades. Mm-hmm. I think this is good for now. We're going we're gonna to have a lot yeah. of talks about this as we move forward, as we develop it out more. And, um, and what I'd like to invite you to do is keep an eye on the comments on this video and, and respond to a lot of the men and women. Because a lot of these guys are probably thinking about women you could share this video with. And I think that would be awesome if you did. If you shared this video with women you think that would find this interesting. And um, if you can monitor the comments and, and respond to. to anybody that asks you directly a question, that would be awesome. So guys, put your comments in the video. If you have questions for Lynn, you have questions for me, Fearless in general, or about this program as we're developing it out, that would be great. I also want to know what your concerns are. What do you want to know more about? You might be... You might have some way of something that you want to work on in, around dating or relationships as a woman, if you're, if you're a woman watching this, that, that we haven't addressed yet. And I want to hear what that is. I'm sure Lynn wants to hear what that is too. So do. make sure to put that in the comments um, and do that right now, please. And uh, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you. And, and uh, make sure to like if you uh, haven't liked the video, if you, if you actually like it, like it, please. It really helps out the algorithm. Make sure to subscribe and share. Share this with all the women that you think um, would be interested in this or other men or whoever. Just share. I really appreciate it. And, um, oh, yeah, and hit that notification button. If you, you know, a lot of the, the videos, just because you subscribe to the channel doesn't mean that you're getting the videos. You're going to see them in your feed. If you want to see these videos in your feed, especially some of the upcoming content we've got coming out, Make sure to uh, click that uh, bell icon and hit the notifications on it. And with that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.